We begin with what we know about this man, the suspect in the deadly New York City terror attack. Plus, learn who were some of the heroes and victims. And is social media adding to the anxiety of teens? Tonight at 10, watch an all new episode of Designated Survivor. Then stay up late with us for the news at 11. From the ABC Columbia studio, I'm Kimberly Davis. Here are your trending headlines for Wednesday, November 1st. New details are emerging about the New York City attacker. He's a 29 year old from Uzbekistan. He moved to the U.S. in 2010 and lived most recently in New Jersey. Early this morning, the FBI escorting a group of women and children outside of the house. ABC's chief investigative correspondent Brian Ross joins us now with what we know. Overnight, the FBI searched the home of the suspect in Patterson, New Jersey, just across the river from New York. 29-year-old Saifullah Saipov, a native of Uzbekistan, moved to Patterson with his wife and three children after living in Tampa and Cincinnati. Friends said at one point he worked as a driver for Uber in New Jersey, where neighbors there say he kept to himself. He wasn't friendly at all. It's like he didn't want anyone to approach him, ask him any questions, or even say hello. He was very standoffish. Police believe they found Saipov's vehicle in the parking lot of a Home Depot where he rented that truck he used in the attack. And this morning, law enforcement officials say Saipov left notes behind in that truck, indicating he carried out the attack for ISIS. ISIS has tremendously persuasive online videos and recruitment tools, persuasive to a particular kind of person, to a person who is generally male and disgruntled. The terror group has been calling for its followers to carry out low-tech attacks using knives and vehicles. Saipov grew up in Tashkent, Uzbekistan, where he applied for and won his U.S. visa in 2010 under what's called the Diversity Immigrant Visa Program for residents of countries that haven't sent many immigrants to the U.S. Coincidentally, it was an Uzbek immigrant in Stockholm, Sweden earlier this year who police said hijacked a truck and used it in an attack that killed five people. We're also learning more about the victims, students on a bus and tourists visiting New York, plus the hero officer who stopped the killer. ABC's Gio Benitez is outside Bellevue Hospital, where some of those injured were taken. Among the dead, five high school friends from Argentina visiting New York City to celebrate their 30th graduation from high school. The Home Depot truck plowing into them as they took a group bike ride. Central, we need buses to Vestry and Chambers. Vestry and Chambers, we got at least four on the ground, girl. More than a dozen injured and eight killed as first responders rushed to the mile-long crime scene in Lower Manhattan. I was able to see the bodies and um, three destroyed bicycles as well as all the police, firefighters, bomb squad, SWAT team arriving on the scene. Oh my God. Oh my God. Six died on the scene, two at the hospital. One is a Belgian national. This morning, several victims are still clinging to life at two New York City hospitals, while this man, 28-year-old NYPD officer Ryan Nash, is being hailed as a hero. He put an end to the terrorist rampage by confronting him, then shooting him in the stomach. I want to commend a response for our NYPD officer that was on post near the location who stopped the carnage moments after it began. Nash, a six-year veteran, was responding to a separate incident in the area when he rushed to the carnage. The Long Island resident commanded Sapoff to drop his weapons, which turned out to be a paintball and pellet gun. Nash shot him, keeping Sapoff alive so authorities could get more information from him. Now to a GMA experiment, taking a closer look at how social media affects teens. ABC's Deborah Roberts sat down with a group for a candid conversation and what they didn't know their moms were watching behind the glass. Every girl thinks that they have to be better than the other girl. There's just a constant pressure, I guess, with everybody. Sometimes I'll say, like, you know, your stomach area is fat, and I'm like, wait, is it? Teen girls offering surprising details about their struggles. We set up an experiment at Focus Suites in New York, and we invited a few to come and sit and talk with us. But unbeknownst to them, on the other side of this glass will sit their moms right here, listening and learning about their daughters. But in the adjoining room, the girls only see a plain old mirror. How many of you would say stress is a big problem in your lives? Your hand went up big time. <laughs> the talk quickly turns to their biggest challenge right now, social media. 
Research shows that nearly a third of teen girls are suffering from anxiety. We wondered if their lives online adds to that problem. How big of a part of your lives is social media? I love Very social big. media. Part. <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> Snapchat. My mom has my Instagram password, so she'll usually see things before I do, and then she'll oh be asking gosh. the questions. Questions, she says, about who she's following online. All these girls are deeply plugged in. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. 71% of all teens use more than one social media site, a way of expressing themselves. Online, they look happy. Yet these girls say there's a dark side. A lot of criticism towards me on social media, but I choose not to pay attention to it. Cyberbullying translates into real life, yes. and then you have people that are taunting you while you're right there. And if somebody yeah, says, I don't like the way you look? I think I look great, so. Yeah. Who cares what they say? But then it's like, wait, somebody just said that to me. Like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't hate my body, but I always feel that like there's room for improvement all the time. The honesty about their insecurities, tough for one mom behind the mirror. A lot of my friends think that I'm anorexic because I'm really skinny for my age. And sometimes it can hurt, but got to go with tough skin. I used to get bullied in middle school and elementary school because I had a unibrow, I wasn't the skinniest girl. Do you hide anything from your mom on no, social media? No. I, I so why don't we just talk to your moms? now because your moms are here you know the girls stunned that their moms just heard how they navigate their lives with so much instant feedback a problem that didn't exist years ago what surprised you most about you know, anything you heard from your daughter it's so different the struggles that the kids are going through now i believe if parents engage their kids more they get more out of them she's very emotional so she lets things get to her easily. One day she took a nap and I checked her phone and she gets this text message, why don't you shave your arm, you Indian bleep. And immediately, I just, the steam just came out of my ears. With parents so often in the dark, these moms getting a powerful lesson in the lives of teen girls. These girls are gorgeous and they're smart and they're full of anxiety. We'll keep you updated on the continuing coverage of the terror attack in New York and the latest local news, weather and sports on the ABC Columbia mobile app. I'm Kimberly Davis. Be kind to each other. Have a great Wednesday and thanks for watching. We've got 300 Americans stranded in hostile waters. We need to bring them home. Take care of your crew, Captain. We're coming to get you. Take every ship they've got. The new designated survivor tonight on ABC.